Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now something that Jagex has kind of been experimenting with over the last couple of years is combination training methods. Now RuneScape has always had a couple of combination training methods, for example superheating items, maybe training on defensive mode, but recently especially with the addition of stuff like Fossil Island, aerial fishing, some other things, um, there's a lot more combination training methods in the game and surprisingly a lot of these are not only just fun little alternative methods, they are actually in some cases the best option to train your skills in the entire game when you take into account you're training both skills at once. And for being some of the better methods in the game, I think in general a lot of these are somewhat unknown. So today I'm going to be going over pretty much all of the combination training methods in the entire game, giving a brief overview of the requirements and the potential experience rates, and then comparing them to conventional methods. As we're going to be going over so many different methods, it's just going to be a brief overview. Uh, for all of these methods, I'll leave a link in the description for a guide to them as well, in case you want to actually try it out. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy, and let's get started. Now today I'm going to be going over 10 methods. Yes, there are more out there, but these are the more competitive ones, and ones that were kind of actually designed to be a combination training method. Now first up here we have Drift Net Fishing, which actually is very competitive all the way to 99 fishing. You can start doing it at 47 fishing and 44 hunter and is a combination fishing and hunter method. Now drift net fishing is actually so good that from level 47 to 58 fishing it is actually the quickest way to train your fishing even when you compare it to tick manipulation methods. And if you continue past that all the way to 99 it still remains one of the best methods only getting beaten out by 3 tick barbarian fishing and 2 tick harpooning. Now at 47 fishing you're going to get around 50k an hour fishing experience and 60k more or less hunter, but that will scale up as you get more levels. Once you get into the late 90s you are going to get around 77k fishing experience per hour and around 100k hunter experience. Now if you compare that to 3 tick barbarian fishing and hunting black chinchampas, you're still getting 70% of the highest xp method for fishing and around 50% of the highest xp method for hunter which still makes it overall very efficient. So to conclude, drift net fishing is definitely one of the best combination training methods and best overall methods in the entire game. Okay, now next up here we have aerial fishing, which is kind of just budget drift net fishing. The one benefit it has over drift net fishing is you can start it at a lower level. You can start aerial fishing at 43 fishing and 35 hunter, and at that level you're going to get roughly 26k fishing experience per hour and 44k hunter. Now as you level up fishing in hunter, it's going to scale up the experience rate. Uh, to 62k an hour at 99 for fishing and 82k an hour for hunter which means once you get to higher levels you definitely should just be doing drift net fishing anyway but even considering it is objectively worse you're still getting around 56% of the best fishing training method and 41% of the hunter method which means overall you're still around 97% efficient doing this method. Now next spear we have the combination prayer training method uh, which is the ensouled heads training method. Now one of the biggest benefits of this method is it's usually more cost effective than uh, burying bones at a gilded altar. Now that was the case until the wilderness chaos altar was made. Now it's not as competitive on cost as it used to be. Now as with conventional prayer training methods there are no prayer requirements to do this however there is a magic level requirement which is not present when you're burying bones at an altar. Now because there is no actual prayer level requirement for this I think it's more fair to compare the methods on cost instead of the level requirement because it's all one. Now assuming that you have a fairly high combat level in a cannon and you are killing the ensouled dragon heads, I was actually personally able to get around 375,000 experience per hour in prayer. I also got around 20k attack experience, uh, 15k ranged experience and 45k magic. Now at the time the cost was around 7.5 gp per xp, which the closest comparison I can find is actually burying hydra bones at the Chaos Altar. Now burying Hydra Bones at the Chaos Altar gives you around 750k an hour in prayer, which means killing and soul dragon heads gave me about 50% of the comparable prayer experience, around 15% of the comparable magic experience, and around 15% for attack experience, making it around 81% efficient overall. Now next up here we have the other combination training method added with the Fossil Island and that is Underwater Thieving. Uh, which is a combination thieving and agility training method. Now you can start this at a very low level and the only main requirement is access to Fossil Island, however it doesn't become very viable until later levels. 
Now once you get into the later levels, it becomes actually very efficient. You can get upwards of 38,000 experience per hour in agility and up to 140k per hour in thieving at the same time. Which means if you compare that to Pyramid Plunder and the Hallowed Sepulchre, you're getting about 45% of the best agility training method and around 52% of the best thieving training method, which means it's around 97% efficient overall. And before the addition of the Hallowed Sepulchre, it would probably be actually over 100%. Now next up here we have training on defensive mode for either chinning or bursting. Now I'm going to be having a look at chinning and I personally did do this to 99 ranged. Now XP wise it is very efficient. The only issue is the added cost. Well let's have a look at the experience rates that I was getting when I was chinning to 99 ranged. Using black chin chompas I was getting around 335k defense and ranged experience per hour. In comparison you could have trained on the medium fuse and gotten around 900k an hour for ranged. Which means by using the defensive training method you are getting around 37.5% of the best range training method, however you're also getting around 279% more experience than the next best defense training method, which I just put as around 120k per hour at Nightmare Zone. Uh, which means percentage wise it is definitely extremely efficient and I would highly recommend it if you have the money to spare, as there's really no other comparable method. Okay, next up here we have another one that's been in the game for a while, and that is superheating items. Now, in my opinion, superheat actually has a pretty good niche use at lower levels. At levels 43 to 55, it actually is one of the better training methods, offering competitive magic training and smithing at the exact same time. For example, at level 43 magic and 40 smithing, you are able to superheat gold, and assuming you have the goldsmithing gauntlets, you're able to get around 95k an hour magic and 100k per hour in smithing. Now once you get to higher levels it does become less efficient as the true potential of the blast furnace opens up along with other magic training methods. But for example if we have a look at a slightly higher level tier at 60 smithing and 55 magic, you're still getting around 67.8% of the next best magic training method and around 28% of the best smithing method, still making it around 96% efficient overall, which means pretty much through the early and mid levels it actually is a pretty damn good method. Now next up here we have a combination farming and construction method, which in my opinion only has a really niche use. Now in my opinion the best use of this method is just to get from level 1 to 15 to start planting regular trees. The reason it's not really viable mainly comes down to its cost, and it's not really competitive on experience rates either, as farming and construction both offer extremely high experience rates on their own, which means pretty much at no levels is this method efficient experience wise. But if you're willing to sacrifice a ton of money, it is possible to get uh, up to 175,000 experience in farming and construction planting bagged magic trees. But it would cost you 40 mil an hour, so I would recommend not doing it. Okay, next up here we have the Baked Pie spell, which is another one I personally use to get to 99. Beyond the fact that the Big Pie spell is extremely AFK, it's actually also very competitive on experience rates. Now if you're not willing to one tick Karamboans, Baking Pies does become the best option all the way to 99. But even if you are willing to do that, comparing them at later levels, Big Pie is actually still pretty damn good. Now assuming that when you're one tick Karamboaning you're able to maintain an experience rate of around 850k an hour, that would make Summer Pies around 53% efficient as you can get around 455k an hour doing Summer Pies. However on top of that you're also going to get 105k magic experience per hour, which is about 30% of the highest potential magic training method, making it around 83% efficient overall. A pretty good method especially if you want to AFK, one big drawback though is it's kind of hard to obtain the raw pies. Now next up here we have the Spin Flax spell which is a combination magic and crafting training method. Now Spin Flax is available at level 75 magic and 10 crafting and is more competitive on cost than it is experience rates. At all magic levels the experience rate is roughly the same, you can get around 75k per hour magic and crafting. Like I said though the big benefit is that it is pretty much a break even method, uh, which cannot be said for most crafting and magic training methods. Now if we compare it to similar methods at that level bracket, being Ice Bursting at 70 magic, and I suppose Cutting Sapphires is available at 20 crafting, you're going to get around 30% of the experience of Ice Bursting and around 55% of the best crafting training method at that level, making it around 85% efficient but costing you way less. And finally here we have another combination magic and crafting training method, which is the Super Glass Make spell. 
Now, once again, this one's not very competitive on experience. However, it does actually net you a pretty good profit. Now, the profit per hour here varies quite a bit. At the current rates, you can get probably up to around 500k an hour profit while also at the top end getting around 45k magic experience and 105k crafting. Now at very low crafting levels this can be an excellent way to level up your crafting quickly and for a profit which means this method does have a pretty niche use. However once you get up to battle staves and dehyde bodies it's not going to be nearly as efficient but like I said, it's always going to be profitable, so there probably is a niche use for that as well. Anyway guys, those are 10 combination training methods that are available in old school RuneScape. Again, there probably are a few other ones out there, and if there is a major one I missed that is somewhat viable, let me know with a comment down below. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.